The Samsung Galaxy Tab S9, Ultra and regular S9 are likely the best Android tablets money can buy right now. And it's a lot. And a lot of cash. So unless you're Scrooge McDuck and you just don't give a fuck, you, just like me, probably want to get your money's worth out of it on day one. It's important to know that these tips, tricks and hidden features will also be available on the Galaxy Tab S8 if you have the latest updates. Anyway, once again, like Darth Vader once said, join me and together we will rule the galaxy. Okay, tip number one and a little recommendation for you guys. When you swipe up, you have your app drawer. If you hit the three dots in the top right corner, you can sort the app drawer into alphabetical order. If you don't do this, it's gonna take you much longer to find things. Trust me, I recommend you do this straight away. And the second most important thing you do straight away is find the settings icon and drag that onto your home screen. I've already done it, so I've added it here because we are gonna be using it a lot throughout this video. So as much as I'd like to tell you that life is all sunshine and roses, it really isn't. And there's some horrible out there who might at some point want to take from you what you've worked hard for. In this case, I'm referring to your very expensive Galaxy Tab S9. So here's the best way to protect your new investment. Go to settings, scroll down to security and privacy, and then here you'll likely see some exclamation marks, but what we're looking at first is the find my mobile option. And I suggest you enable this straight away. You of course must have a Samsung account, and if you don't have one, set it up. And then once you have, hit the enable to allow this tablet to be found. I also recommend you turn on send last location and offline finding also. The remote unlock is entirely up to you. So if someone else finds it and you want to unlock it from where you are so they can use it or whatever, you could enable that. But one thing you should absolutely do right now is see this web address here at the top, copy and paste that into a note or write it down in a notepad so you don't lose it because this is what you'll use to track down your tab if someone nicks it. So now that you've set this up, if your tablet gets taken, you can track it down like Liam Neeson in that film. I will look for you, I will find you. The name of which escapes me. Anyway, if you've used Samsung Galaxy devices before, you'll be familiar with the edge panels. If you're not, don't worry, I'm about to show you how to get the edge. See this faint handlebar at the side here? When you swipe this out, this is your edge panel. When you hit the little pen at the bottom, you can customize what apps you want on the edge panel. You just hit the little minus to remove apps and you can just tap on an app and it will add it onto that side panel. So what I recommend you do here is populate this edge panel with apps that you don't use frequently because the home screen and the taskbar at the bottom should be your most used apps. And just to give you an example, what I've done here is I've put all of my productivity apps on the home screen and on the taskbar. And then on the edge panel, I've got all my social media and entertainment apps. So they're not distracting me constantly throughout the day when I'm trying to get things done. But like I said before, make sure you leave a couple of free spaces on this edge panel and you'll see why in a moment. And now this is nicely set up. When you swipe out the edge panel, you have access to all of your second most popular apps, or maybe they are your most popular, but the most distracting apps. You could set this tablet up the other way around, have all your entertainment stuff here and your work stuff here, entirely up to you. Okay, now let's expand on the edge panel just a little bit more. When we swipe it out, you'll notice there is a settings icon here and it will disappear after a little while. So if it does, just swipe it out again, make sure you tap the settings before it disappears. And here you have the edge panels and you can customize which edge panels you want for me personally, I like the Smart Select. It's very handy if you have the S Pen, and even if you don't have the S Pen. I also like the Task Bar here, and Live Messages is great fun too. Now we set those up. When we swipe out the Edge Panel, we can swipe across again, and again, and again, depending on how many Edge Panels we set up, and then it will just loop back around. Now check this one out, Live Message. This is pretty fun. You can take one of your images and add these really cool effects to them and then you can actually send it to your friends. I love this feature. <laughs> so if you've just bought yourself a Galaxy Tab S9, you just bought yourself a lot of screen real estate and you'll notice when you boot it up for the first time, so much empty. So here are a few things to do to make it feel a little more like home. And generally speaking on most phones, I tell people straight away to change 
the grid size to maximize the amount of apps you can have on the home screen. But when you have such a big screen, you don't really need to do this. In fact, if you fill this screen with apps, it will just look messy. And always remember, you can swipe up and have access to all of your apps here in the app drawer. Here's what I recommend you do. Add widgets to the home screen and make them big and make them useful. To do this, just hold your finger down anywhere on the screen, go to widgets at the bottom here and you'll see all of the available widgets. And this is what the tablet looked like when I first got it, except for my custom buttons down here, which I'll come back to a little later on in the video. And this is what it looked like after I customized it. So some of the widgets I've set up on day one are the to-do list. So I have this very important to-do list here. I think everybody watching this video should take note of these. Also, I've added the Google Drive here so I can quickly upload stuff to the drive or access stuff from the drive very quickly from the desktop. This is the Google Keep widget. So I use this for taking notes. I can quickly just hit the plus and take notes or create a tick box list. And then here I've got the Samsung Galaxy Bud controls. So once I open the Samsung Galaxy Buds, it should recognize them straight away. And from here, I can adjust the noise cancellation, 360 reality audio. I also have the battery widget at the top here, which shows me how much power is left in the buds. And even the S Pen can be tracked using that same widget. So this battery widget is super useful and I do recommend it. And then up here, I have a VPN and this is one that I pay for. But did you know there is a free VPN that Samsung offer with its limitations? I'll show you that in a moment. Anyway, you can see how I've set this up. I've got a bunch of widgets on this side. I've got my most important productivity apps here on this side and then the most used apps across the bottom. And I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so you can see that I've set this up for business. But one of the great things about widgets on the Samsung Galaxy devices is the fact that you can stack them. So just behind the very important to-do list, I have my YouTube music widget. And just above that, where I have the Galaxy Buds controls, I have play, pause, rewind for YouTube music. And then up here where I have the battery indicators, if I swipe that across, I've got the weather, so I could check whether it's worth going out and touching grass. And then over here behind my Google Drive, I have Netflix. So you get the idea, you can transform your home screen just by swiping across on the widgets, and it's very easy to do. So to create a widget stack, you can pinch anywhere on the home screen, go to a widget that you want to add onto the desktop, let's say Samsung Notes, and we can literally drop that on top of another. If it isn't quite the same size, what you actually have to do, and this is a little bit of a workaround, is actually drag it onto another page, resize it to the same size as the other widget that you want to drop it on top of. And then once you've done that, you can drag it back across to where you want to drop it on top. And there we go, we have a new widget stack with the Samsung Notes here underneath the Google search bar. So spend some time on this, think about the widgets that will make your life easier and place those on your home screen. And trust me, don't just fill the entire screen with apps because always remember, that's what the app drawer is for. Okay, so here's a quick tip and it's a very useful one if you don't wanna do split screening but you are taking notes from one app or one window and you wanna copy it over to a new window. Check this out, let's say you found an amazing website like this one and you wanna take notes from it and write it in a notepad on your device. So let's say we've got Samsung Notes open here. What we can now do is we can go to the multi window or the backgrounding and literally just pull it down gently like this, not all the way so that it fills the screen. You can take your mental notes now and then go straight back to your notes here and write down whatever it is that you were referencing. So this could be useful for numbers and things like that where you need to capture some data from a website and input it into a spreadsheet or or anything like that. Everyone's reason for having a tablet will differ and I'm assuming some of you guys out there might have bought it for work or at least that's what you tell people. So let me show you some of the basics of how to set up split screening and how to save split screening setups. There are a lot of ways to do this but I'm gonna show you the most basic way. The easiest way to do this is to open an app that you want to split screen and then open up backgrounding and then hit the icon and hold the icon of the app that you want to split screen and immediately it will pin it to one side of the screen. You now have the option to select the second app on the left side of the screen and let's use Samsung Notes. Now we have an app pair set up and see the three dots in the middle? If you tap that, you can switch which side they're on, like so. 
And if you tap it again, see the other one, you can split it vertically as well, which could be good if you have the tablet in the portrait orientation. Now you can add a third split screened app if you want to, and you can do it the same way I just showed you, or you could do it like this by dragging an app from the taskbar onto one of the open windows. Now you have three apps open at the same time. And just like before, you can rotate these around however you want, and you can even resize them by dragging the two dots up or down. Another way to do split screening is to swipe out the edge panel, which you've nicely set up already, and drag an app from there onto the home screen on top of one of the other open windows. Now, once you've got a setup that works for you, for example, you've got some information here, you've got a notepad there, maybe a calculator here, hit the three dots in the middle and hit the little star with the plus icon. And you have the option now to save that split screen is set up to be recalled later on. So you can pin it to your taskbar, your home screen, or even your edge panel. And I recommend the edge panel. And this is why I told you earlier on to leave a few spaces so that you can add your split screening setups here. Now, if you're quite confident with the split screening I just showed you, make sure you stick around because there is some advanced methods that not many people know about that I'll show you if you stick around to the end of this video. Now, when it comes to multitasking, the split screening is fantastic, but did you know you can actually add another layer on top of the split screening, which could take your productivity game to the next level. Let's say, for example, you bring out your split screen setup that you saved before, and you need a calculator to help you figure out the equations for some homework you're doing if you're not using ChatGPT. What you can do here is open your app store, find your calculator, and drag it onto the three dots right in the middle, and this will create a pop-up window on top of the other three windows. Now, this might appear to be very distracting right now because it's blocking everything that's on the screen. You can resize this by dragging from the top corner inwards like this to pretty much any size you want. And you can drag this around on the screen and place it wherever is convenient. And when you hit the blue bar at the top, see the little icon there? you can actually adjust the transparency of the calculator. So it's still there on top of everything and ready to be used, but it's not obscuring your view of whatever it is you're doing. And when you hit the blue bar and hit the cross, it goes away. So you could use this for timers. You could use this for instructions. I'm sure you guys can think of many use cases for the floating window. And here's another quick way to create a floating window. Just like before, the same way you do split screening, if you drag an app onto the home screen, it will open split screening, but if you hit line at the top, you can actually hit this icon here, and this creates that pop-up window on its own, even if there's no other apps open already on the device. Okay, so that's the boring stuff out of the way. Let's get into what you really bought this tablet for, movies and games and social media. So with a big screen like this must come significant power drain, that's just the way it is. Something that I've done to kind of reduce the amount of power being used when idle like this is having a dark wallpaper. I do recommend you apply a dark wallpaper yourself. Anything with lots of bright colors like white will drain more power. It might be minimal, but it all adds up. Anyway, the tablet itself is very good at auto brightness and auto battery optimization. It will actually use AI to learn your user patterns so that it can be more efficient. And it is rocking the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, which is the very best of the best in 2023 to date. Anyway, at times you may want to boost the display so that you can see it better when watching movies. And to do this by default, you'd have to swipe down, swipe down again, and then you get your display slider down here. And that seems like a lot of work. So here's how we can speed up this process by 50%. Swipe down from the top right corner, swipe down again, and then here hit the three dots and then go to quick panel layout. Here you'll see brightness control, change this, to show always. Now, when you swipe down from the top right corner, you'll have your brightness slider straight away. So now the next time you're on a plane going on holiday, you can blast the brightness and give yourself a suntan on the way. Or you could dim it down manually so that you're not giving the person next to you a suntan. Now, if you're not worried about battery life because maybe you're tethered into a power source and your primary use of the Galaxy Tab is video content, then this next setting is an excellent one to enable. Go to settings, Scroll down to advanced features, scroll down to video brightness, and right now it's set on normal. When you enable bright mode, you can choose what apps have access to bright mode. 
toggle on and off, the ones that make the most sense to you. And now whenever you boot up those apps, it will default to a very bright display without you having to mess around with the brightness slider. But be mindful of the power consumption. Now, whether you're using headphones or the very good built-in speakers on this tablet, I think you're gonna to wanna to change this setting because it will take your audio experience to the next level. Go to settings, go to sound and vibration, scroll down to sound quality and effects, and here enable Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for gaming. And if you don't believe me on this one, trust me, do a little split test, play some audio with this off and then switch it on. And something I just wanna show you real quick is how to add the Dolby Atmos button to your quick settings. So if you swipe down from the top right corner and then swipe down again, you get the three dots in the top right corner, tap that and go to edit buttons. Here you can drag the Dolby Atmos button from the top onto your quick buttons layout. I believe I've already done it. So when you do this, you can toggle on and off Dolby Atmos as and when you need it. But I personally just leave it on all the time because it sounds better. Okay, if you just jumped over from the Apple ecosystem, I think you're gonna love this feature. It's called Music Share. Now, if you have the Galaxy Buds and you pair it to your Samsung Galaxy device, it will automatically link to the tablet and any other Galaxy devices that you have. But if you don't have Galaxy Buds, let's say you have AirPods or something like this, the Technics AZ80s, what you can do is connect these to your phone and then enable Music Share and make sure it's enabled here on your tablet also. Now what you can do is if you're playing music here on your phone, of course you're gonna be able to hear the music. But then what you can also do is play music here and now your third party earbuds or headphones can dynamically switch between the two devices. Okay, so if you've just jumped over from the iPhone, the gesture controls are gonna be much more familiar to you. Here's how to set those up. Go to settings, go to display, and then here scroll down to where you see navigation bar. Tap that, and now you can change the navigation type to gestures and the buttons will disappear. And essentially what this does is it works just like an iPhone, swipe upwards and hold for your backgrounding, swipe the left edge to go back. You can also swipe the right edge as well, just like an iPhone. And I'm sure this is old news to you, even if you're an Android user as well, but stick around because I've got some advanced secret gestures, which I'm gonna show you a little later on in the video. Okay, now let's talk about customizing the keyboard. And what you're looking at right here is a very advanced keyboard, which I've spent quite a bit of time setting up. And if you stick around to the end, I'll explain how I've done this. But what I wanna show you in this tip is how to customize the keyboard and tailor it more for your hand size. So if you have really small fingers or really big fingers, this tip is gonna be really useful for you. So if you hit the little icon in the bottom left corner, next to the Samsung keyboard, hit the settings icon here. This will bring you to the settings for your keyboard. If you scroll down, you'll see size and transparency. And then here, you can customize how much the screen the keyboard takes up or how little you want it to take up. And you can move it around left to right to whatever the comfortable writing position is for you. Once you've done that, hit done and now your keyboard will be tailored specifically for your finger size. Now, if you're gonna do lots of reading on your Galaxy Tab, I think you're gonna like this tip. Go to settings, scroll down to advanced features, go to motions and gestures, and enable keep screen on while viewing. Now, what this will do is your tablet will use its front cameras to detect whether you're looking at the screen or not. And if you are looking at the screen, it won't dim and it won't switch off whilst you're in the middle of reading something very important. So the S Pen is the perfect partner for the Galaxy Tab. If you've got the Ultra, you would have got it by default. If you've got a regular one, you could buy it separately. And there's tons of functionality that this brings to the table. In fact, I made an entire video about S Pen functionality. I'll link that at the end. Anyway, what I wanna show you guys is if you prefer to write than type, you can actually do this on the Samsung keyboard and it will convert it into digital text. And to do this, all you need to do is hit this icon here, and now you have a space where you can handwrite whatever it is you want. And then to go back to your keyboard, you can just hit the keyboard icon here and go back to your regular typing. Okay, let's talk about probably the best use case for the S Pen, and arguably the best way to kill some time or distract your kids for a little while. It is with a coloring book, and there is one pre-installed on your Galaxy Tab device. The quickest way to access it is by hitting the pen button, 
scrolling down and it's called pen up if you don't have it installed on your device already you can download it from the galaxy store this is what it looks like just install it and now you have a digital coloring book the perfect distraction in any situation now if you're a forgetful person or you let the kids use your s pen or something like that and they happen to lose it or you forget to ask for it back here's a little trick to help you avoid that happening go to settings advanced features s pen more s pen settings and enable warn if s pen is left behind so if you take your tablet out of range of the s pen you will get an automatic pop-up on your tablet that will tell you to go back and find it and trust me if you have an s pen you definitely want to do this okay let me show you guys a real fun trick and maybe a very useful productivity hack check this out on the edge panel i've set up an app trio and this only works with the official Samsung apps. So with the Galaxy Notes, you're meant to be doing work here and you can create PDFs and things like this. But just to show you what you can do, at the bottom here, you'll see the website that I have open is available here. And I can actually copy the entire page into the note or the link into the note. And there we go. And then here I have the Samsung Gallery app. And what I can actually do is copy images into the note by hitting attach. This will include the entire photo, but check this out. You can extract parts of the photo and place them where you want within your current note. Just by holding down on the part of the photo we want to extract, for example, me. I'm now in the document. And of course you can draw on the Samsung Notes app. And then when you're happy with your creation, you can hit save as, and you can choose what you want to save it as. PDF, for example, is universally used, but of course you've got Microsoft support there as well. Okay, so these next couple of tips are for those of you that use a Samsung Galaxy device alongside your Galaxy Tab. I think you're gonna like this. Check this out, go to settings, go to connected devices, here go to call and text on other devices and enable allow calling on this tablet and allow texting on this tablet and make sure your accounts are synced up so that all your phone book will be listed on your tablet because if you don't do that and you get a phone call, you might not know who it's from. So if I don't have my phone in my hand and I'm using the tablet, I can still make calls right here. Okay, this next setting will help you seamlessly switch between your Samsung Galaxy phone and your tablet, but only if you do this. Go to settings, go to connected devices, and then here, make sure this is enabled. Continue apps on other devices. And it will tell you here that this only works with the Samsung internet app and the Note. So when you begin work on one device, you can seamlessly throw it to the other device and continue working. So if you find yourself in a coffee shop one day doing some work and you need to get up and go, you can literally put your tablet back in your bag and then continue the work on your phone. And for this to work properly, you will need to go into the settings on your device. Also go to connected devices and make sure that it's enabled here as well. So if you've ever used an iOS device, one of the standout features that Apple has is AirDrop. It uses Bluetooth to establish the connection and then it uses Wi-Fi to transmit the files or photos or videos or whatever it is you're sending between devices and it does it in seconds. Well, with Samsung, they have their own version of this and it works just as seamlessly if you're in the Samsung Galaxy ecosystem and it is called Quick Share. So here's a quick example of how this works. You can go to a photo that you have, hit the share button and then you'll see the Quick Share icon here and you'll also see the name of your device here above and I can send it directly across using QuickShare in seconds. And this is an invaluable tool that you need to know about on day one. That's why I've added it to this list. So if there's one tip that you come away with from this video that you're like, man, I'm so glad I watched this. I think it's gonna be this one. If you have Samsung devices and Windows computers, what you want to do on day one is definitely, absolutely, positively download the Samsung Flow for Galaxy. You can get this from your Galaxy Store. You can also get this from the Microsoft Store on your Windows computer. Now, with this installed, it brings 
some more cross connectivity to all of your devices and it is an invaluable tool. Essentially what this will allow you to do is copy and paste things between devices and send things to and from devices over Wi-Fi. When you set it up, you do want to set it to always auto connect to the tablet. And you'll have access to this kind of messaging screen between the devices where you can drop files back and forwards. And this also allows you to copy and paste between devices. For example, if we copy this web address, we can go over here and paste the web address on the tablet. And this works on your PC as well. So let's say you're working on a document on your PC and you want to copy and paste a bunch of text from your PC to your tablet or to your phone. You can do that as long as you've enabled Samsung Flow. And I'm actually kicking myself that I didn't add this earlier on in the video because it is an incredible feature that I don't think many people know about. Now you're not one of those people. Now here's a very useful feature that the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 has. You can actually use it as a power bank and share the battery life here with your phone if you're running low. To set this up, plug in your phone via a cable, swipe down to bring down your settings. Here go to charging connected via USB. Hit the USB options. And then you should see a setting here that says power options, charge connected devices. Make sure that's enabled and your phone will charge. Okay, so you've made it this far, don't give up now because in my videos, the best stuff is usually at the end. <laughs> so check this one out. If you don't have it already, you need to get an app called Goodlock. And the best way to get this app is to go to your Samsung Galaxy store and you'll see it here, install this app. Once you open Goodlock, you'll be presented with a bunch of different modules. Essentially, these are applets within the app and you can add all of them if you want. And I do recommend doing these top five straight away. And the one I wanna show you is Navistar. So Navistar is a way for you to customize the buttons, which I have done here. And you can see I've got a few different ones which I was playing around with. These ones that kind of look like the icons. Also a more colorful version of the text ones that I created. Then I've got the text on its own and then I've got the text in the black circle. And you can actually create these using images that you've made yourself and that's what these are. But then there's a bunch of preset ones here as well that you can choose from, which are quite fun. But nothing's better than the ones you make yourself. And actually, I do like the white text with nothing around it. I think that's pretty cool. Now, when you scroll down, you see there's some other cool things you can do here. See this little dot? I don't know if you've noticed it, but it's been here throughout the video. That actually allows me to hide the buttons and bring them back on demand. So if you double tap this dot, it hides the buttons. And then if you swipe up, it brings them back. If we double tap it again, it locks them back into that corner. So if you like that full screen experience that you get with gestures, but you prefer buttons, then if you activate this, it's a happy medium for you. Now, remember how I said earlier on in the video, how I was gonna share some advanced navigation tricks with you guys? This is it. Go to Life Up and add the multi-star module. So if you enable this setting, you can push and hold the recent key, which is the multi key, which I have here, and it will open multi windows. And you can choose how you want those to open, in split screen or in pop-up. And I actually like the pop-up one. So for example, let's say I've got the photos here. If I hold multi down, it turns it automatically into a pop-up screen. Now this is a really useful one for multitasking. If you enable this, you'll be able to see more within each window that you have open on the screen. And I do think this is a good one to activate. So that's multi-star. Now if we go back to the little paint palette icon over here, scroll down and install Home Up. Now within Home Up, there's a bunch of different settings to play around with and you can really customize the user experience on your home screen. But I did make an entire video about this. So I'm not gonna to go too in depth into it. I just wanna show you one thing though, if you are coming over from iOS, is if you go to Task Changer, you can actually change the backgrounding to look just like an iPhone if you want to. So you have the style here. Grid is the typical style. You can have the stack style. So this is the iOS looking backgrounding method like this. You can have a vertical list or a slim list. And this will really make your device different from quite a lot of other people who have the same tablet. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see there's a bunch of other gesture features available. 
I suggest you play around with these and just see which ones work the best for you. And like I said before, I did an entire video about good luck, so I will link that for you in a moment. Now, sooner or later, there'll come a time when your tablet is idle for a while and it's times like this when it would be a great thing if the tablet could self-optimize itself and it can and it will if you do this. Go to settings, go to advanced features, go to battery and device care and then here is auto optimization. If you enable this, it tells you what it's gonna do. Essentially, when you're not using your device for prolonged amounts of time, it will reboot the device in order to refresh everything and start anew when you next use it. I do recommend you switch this one on. Did you know that Samsung provide some very helpful security tools for free to use? And these might be region specific, but it's worth checking if you've just bought this tablet. Go to settings, go to security and privacy, and go to app security. And you can see right now it's off and it will be off by default. And if you tap on that, you'll see you can turn on McAfee security. And essentially what this will do is scan every install on the device to make sure it's not some kind of spyware or virus. Now, when you go back to the security and privacy page, you should see green ticks next to everything. If there isn't, then you definitely wanna look at that and see what the problem is. But if you scroll down, there's another useful tool and it's called Secure Wi-Fi. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned my VPN. This is Samsung's own VPN that's already installed on your tablet and you do get one gig per month for free. And you can subscribe if you want to, but if you use this wisely when you're at a coffee shop or whatever, you should be all right, unless you're binge watching something on Disney Plus or Netflix or something like that. If you enable auto protect, it will kick in whenever you connect to an unknown Wi-Fi network. I do not recommend you do that if you're on the free plan. Instead, what I recommend you do is actually add a widget to your home screen for the secure Wi-Fi, either the small one or the bar one, and just activate it as and when you need it. All right, so at some point in time, I'm guessing that someone else might want to use your Galaxy Tab. And at that point, you'll realize that all of your personal information is there for the taking to whoever you hand your tablet to. And with an iPad, there is no real solution to this. But with the Galaxy Tab, there is. You can create separate users who have restricted access to the things on the tablet. And really, this should have been tip number one. Here's how to set it up. Go to settings, go to accounts and backup. Here, go to users, and you can create guest users who can have some access to your tablet. To do this, just go to add profile, choose restricted profile. You can add a picture for that person. And now you can choose what apps they have access to. So for example, if it's just some gaming and some movies they wanna watch on the tablet, you can enable those apps only. And there we go, the user is now created. Now, next time you lock the tablet and you switch it back on, your own icon will be in the top right corner. But if you tap it, you can switch between the different users. And there we go, we have the apps that we give the permission to use. And then when you close the tablet again, you can hit the icon top right corner and switch back to your main profile whenever you want to use it. Now here's a bonus tip for the lock screen since we're here right now. If you double tap the clock, you'll see you have a bunch of widgets already predefined for you. But if you hit the settings at the bottom, you can actually choose extra widgets for the lock screen. That will appear only when you double tap the clock. Now there is an advanced way of modifying the lock screen which I made an entire video about. And that includes a lot of the navigation stuff and the customizing the buttons and also the S Pen functionality. So if you truly want to master your Samsung Galaxy universe, then trust me, much to learn you still have. If you want to dive deeper into good luck, check out this thumbnail. Or if you want to learn how to use the S Pen properly, check out this thumbnail. And if you have a Samsung Galaxy S23 or one of the newer Galaxy devices, make sure you subscribe with your notifications on for more tips and tricks like this. I appreciate you guys for watching this one and I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.